What's going on you guys and welcome back to the A-Ray Show. So today's video is going to be a very special one. It's been a year and a few days since I've started my dividend growth journey and honestly it's been a great experience and a very rewarding one too. So in this video I'm going to be revealing how much percentage of a return I've gotten, how much dividends I've gotten and pretty much everything to do with my one year experience in dividend growth investing. So if you guys want to see all that stay tuned and you guys already know cue that intro. Man, I'm so excited to show you guys my dividend growth journey and how this past year has been. So with that being said, if you guys take anything from this video, just know that you can honestly start from anywhere. It can be five to ten dollars or it can be a hundred or however much you like and you can go wherever you want to. Your goals can be achieved. So if you get anything out of this video, just know that this is possible. So with that being said, you guys can see that my portfolio is sitting around $4,867, which isn't a lot relative to a lot of the other portfolios that you can find online on Reddit or YouTube. So with that being said, let's take a look at where I started my journey. So I started my journey slightly after the pandemic on July 1st with about $500. So I put my money in early morning and I ended down about $3. So from that date, I've been putting in $50 every single week. And I believe somewhere in January, I decided to put $75 instead of $50. Ever since then, my portfolio has grown to $4,867, which is a huge, insane return. But, you know, you're probably thinking, yeah, that's because you put in that $75 every single week. Well, that's the whole point with dividend growth investing is you're just dollar cost averaging into your portfolio, hoping that you'll be able to not only grow your net worth of your portfolio, but also the return on capital appreciation and also growing your dividends. That's the whole premise of a dividend growth portfolio. So with that being said, you guys can see that my gain is $772, which is insane. That's about 38% return. And honestly, I didn't see my portfolio perform this well. And I know a lot of it is due to because of the timing I got into my dividend growth portfolio was right after the pandemic, where we've seen just a huge boost in dividend stocks, especially in the S&P 500. But nonetheless, it's going to be days where your portfolio is going to go down and days your portfolio is going to go up. And that's the cool thing about dollar cost averaging. But nonetheless, as you guys can see, I'm up almost $800 and a return of 38%. And that's what the dividends include. And you can see that my earned dividends is around $57.83. And that's going to be a huge factor to my gain in my return percentage. So this gain over here, if you click on the little I, it tells you that it's a combination of all market capital gains and dividends earned. So that's why my gain is pretty high. As you can see, the market gain right here is $7.15, which is still really good. And then that earned dividend also factors into that return percentage over here if you click on the I. It's under money way to return, so that's why it looks really good. Not going to lie, I just want to be a little bit transparent over here. But nonetheless, if we go over to my holdings, you guys can see my unrealized gains. So I've got unrealized gains of $663, which is almost a 16% gain over the past year. And I'm pretty happy with that. I'm not going to lie. That's a great return. It may not look like that 37%, which was just insane. But this is my unrealized gain. Like I said before, guys, I just want to be pretty transparent about all my holdings. And if I can inspire any of you guys to start dividend growth investing or continue on the journey, that's what I'm looking for with this video. So with that being said, I will say that right now I have 41 positions. So that means I have 41 stocks that I am holding. When I first started off, I think I started with 60 to 70. And a lot of those companies I ended up selling because I didn't really know too much. I just picked companies that I really like in general and not in terms of fitting into my strategy. And we'll go over that later on in the video, what I mean by that. But what happened was a lot of these stocks, they just didn't make any sense for me to hold with my long-term outlook and my long-term goal. So I decided to sell them and that's why I have a pretty good realized gain for those. And that's why I have that, I believe it was like 700 whatever percent or $700 gain, whatever it was. But yeah, let's take a look at what my stocks have been doing. So if we filter this by the most unrealized gain, I've got 38% in target, which is huge. This is one of the stocks that wasn't even in my original portfolio at first. I had Walmart before, which is kind of insane to see that I've got this huge growth on target. And I have a video about the difference between target and Walmart. So I'll leave a link right over here if you guys want to check that out. But the other way around, let's see the one that I lost the most money on is 
and that's ESPO. So this is an interesting stock and it's actually an ETF, but I'll do a whole video on that in the future. But the cool thing with unrealized gain and that money weighted return is a lot of these stocks, you can see that I'm down. But with that dividend being earned, especially for AT&T where they pay a pretty fat dividend, I'm actually not typically losing money because I'm actually getting a lot of money through dividends. So it's just something to think about when looking at a dividend growth portfolio and trying to understand the things between unrealized gain and money weighted return. So that's just an overall look at the performance of my portfolio over the past year. Like I said before, guys, it's for me at least, it's not all about the return percentage, if especially in the short term, because I'm looking to build this portfolio in the long term. So that's just looking at my dividend metrics. Of course, there's a lot to know about everyone's individual dividend growth portfolio. So I want to show you guys something really cool. So this is a platform that I've showed you guys before, and it's really just a cool way to track your dividends online. So I'll leave a link right here if you guys want to learn more about that. So with that being said, you guys can see that I've got my major dividend metrics up here, my dividend yield, my yield on costs, my annual income, and my portfolio beta. So of course, guys, I did a whole video on this, so I'm not going to go too much into detail, but right here, I'll talk a little bit about my strategy for the past year. So you guys probably can see that my dividend yield is a 1.9%. So to a lot of you guys and a lot of dividend growth investors out there, they really want a higher dividend yield. But the thing is, I factor in time horizon. So I'm 23 years old. I just graduated college, got my MBA. So with that being said, my time horizon is probably a lot longer than some of the other people. So I'm really looking to grow my dividends over time and really build my portfolio and my positions. So the ultimate goal for me is to grab companies like Apple and Microsoft where the dividend yield is very low. As you can see, it's only 0.61%, but the cool thing is their dividend growth trajectory is a lot higher than some of the other companies. For example, if you look at AT&T, their dividend yield is somewhere near 6 to 7%, but they don't really grow their dividend. In fact, I believe that they're going to actually cut it because of a merger. But nonetheless, you guys can kind of see that there's really two ways this can go. So I'm really just looking to build my dividend yield in the future and grow my dividends in the future. Right now, I don't care about the dividends because even if I were to get them right now, I would just reinvest them and I would actually get taxed on them. I'd rather get taxed on them when I'm ready to retire than right now. So it's kind of the cool thing about dividend growth investing. It's different for each and every person. My personal goal, like I said before, is to grow my portfolio over the long term and kind of build that yield on cost. So with that being said, after a full year, my annual income is $93. Again, because my dividend yield is so low, it's $93. If I were to go for companies like AT&T and Verizon or whatnot, my annual income would be a lot higher. But like I said before, it's for me, it's all about growing my portfolio over the long term. Either way, $93 a whole year is really cool. That's like paying for a full Netflix. And honestly, I'm pretty I'm pretty pleased with that. I'm not going to lie. I remember filling in this tracker website every single week and just seeing that annual income grow over time. And every time I get a dividend increase, I can see that annual income grow as well. So it's just something cool to look at. So I'm going to show you guys this cool feature on this platform so I can help you guys kind of visualize your own strategy. So if we hop over to future value, you guys can see that this is a future value where it's projected until 2030. So my five year dividend growth rate is 7.9%. And my goal is to get this as high as possible. For other people, their goal might be to get their dividend yield high as possible so that they can get their annual income as high as possible. It really just depends how far you are and where you are in your journey. And that's a cool thing, like I mentioned before about this dividend growth journey is different for every single person. So what I want to show you guys is if I had a lower dividend growth rate because companies and stocks that typically pay out a higher dividend have a lower growth rate. So if I do that and I update the chart, you guys can see that instead of $278, I would only get be getting $212. So that's just a massive difference when it comes to that dividend growth rate. And that's what you're really looking for if you're newer or younger in your journey. So with that being said, let's kind of customize this to be at where I would be today. I believe it's 7791. Seven, yeah, 791. So let me do that real quick. And then I do $75 every single week. So that would be about $3,900. And then typically the S&P 500 goes up about 9 to 10% every single year. So we're going to be conservative over here and put 8%. And we're going to update that chart. So now if we do that, we can see that in 2030 my ending annual income would be $2,369. In eight years, that's 
that's a kind of decent amount. We've got almost a 1200% increase, which is pretty good. But where I'm really looking to get my dividends is when I retire. So if we keep this up in 25 years, I would be getting $74,000 in annual income in just 25 years. And that's where I'm looking to retire. And all I have to do is just keep up the $75 every single week. And then you can see that there's a massive increase. Wow, what number is that? 15,000%? That's that's just insane to me. So as you guys can see, there's kind of going to be a growth curve over here. And I'm looking to get my dividends over here. A lot of other people want dividends right now. But the thing is their growth curve is not going to be as, as curvy as this, as I like to say curvy. But... Like I said before, guys, it really just depends on your overall strategy. My strategy is to get these dividends in 25 to 30, maybe even 35 years so that I can retire and chill in my retirement. So that's just my overall strategy. It really depends where you guys are going. But yeah, that's pretty much it for kind of figuring out where your strategy is. So with that being said, I want to show you guys my personal dividend tracker just to kind of show you guys where I get my dividends from and how the past year has given me them dividends. So this is a spreadsheet created by True Financials. Shout out to him. He's another YouTuber and he kindly allowed me to use this and let you guys all use it as well. So I'll leave a link to his channel and this template if you guys want to use it as well. So as you guys can see, I started in July where I only got 11 cents in dividends. And, you know, you got to start somewhere. And then as you guys can see, it's been gradually growing ever since then. My monthly average for 2020 was $2.71. I was getting $2.71 every single month on average. But the cool thing with that is as you grow your dividends, it's a snowball effect. And you just keep reinvesting your dividends, which means that you're going to be getting more dividends the next time a dividend payout comes. And on top of that, if you're weekly investing into these stocks, it's going to just keep snowballing and growing and growing every single time. So if we go back to the tracker dividends, that's why this effect happens. That's why this growth curve happens because you're just investing in reinvesting those dividends it just keeps going up and up and up and that's the cool thing about dividend growth investing so as you guys can see now my new monthly average for 2021 is five dollars and fifty cents i'm nowhere near where i'm looking for i'm still in the very beginning stages of that growth curve i'm still growing that snowball where that snowball is still really small still haven't been able to push it down the hill to let it grow and accumulate over time but nonetheless, you guys can see that I started off with 11 cents and just in June, I've got $10.50. So most of my stocks will pay out quarterly. So if we correlate this 11 cents to the next quarter, I went all the way up to $1.64. And then now if I do that to the next first month of the first quarter, $2.58 and then $3.60. So it's slowly but surely growing over time as I'm adding more money and as I'm reinvesting my dividends. And as you guys can see, in six months in 2020, I was at $16.26. And so far for the first six months, I'm at 30, almost $33. So it's all about building your portfolio over time, being patient and consistent. So like again, guys, if you guys could get anything out of these videos, it's that you can start anywhere. As long as you're consistent, you believe in your portfolio and you have a good strategy, you're going to be completely fine with dividend growth investing. It doesn't take a lot of work. All you got to do is pick your initial stocks, stick with your strategy and be consistent. So that's pretty much it for the dividends that I've accumulated so far. I can't wait to do this series a little bit longer and hopefully maybe I'll do the same thing in 2022. And when I look back, I'll say that, yo, $10.50 is nothing. Hopefully by then I'll be getting a lot more in dividends so then I can reinvest it and grow my portfolio. So let me know in the comments down below how far and how well you guys are doing on your journey or if you guys are thinking about starting this journey as well. And just to kind of reiterate that compounding effect, let's take a look at Johnson Johnson over here. The first time they ever paid me a dividend was on September 8th, where they paid me 28 cents. And then the next time on December 8th, where it was 41 cents, then 50, then 83 on the next following quarters. And this is going to be a reoccurring thing when it comes to growing your dividends over time. It's all about that compound effect. And we can see that over and over again. So if I go to pretty much any stock, we'll go to Apple because it's the largest of my holdings. You're going to see that same consistent growth. And in fact, some of them, and sometimes it grows even more. So we went from 8 cents to 13 to 18, and then that doubled to 36. So again, guys, it's all about consistency and growing your portfolio over time. It may start off really small. As you guys can see, I was only making 28 cents and then 89. 
and then now only a dollar 41 that might not be a lot but over time it's going to grow and your portfolio will compound before you know it so again guys if you guys got any value out of this video it would be that you can start at anywhere i started at 500 dollars, and now my portfolio is almost worth five thousand dollars it's kind of insane to think about because i never thought that my portfolio would grow this fast this fast but again guys you can start anywhere and you can grow your portfolio as big as you want to just got to do your research and then be consistent and that's really all it takes when it comes to building your dividend growth portfolio so if you guys got any value out of this or if you guys were thinking about starting a dividend growth portfolio i would really appreciate it if you guys could leave a like comment and subscribe let me know down in the comments below i'm really hyped for everyone that's starting on this journey the sooner the better so if you guys are starting let me know down in the comments down below and hopefully we'll be able to grow our portfolio together and hopefully build a community as this channel grows as well so again guys i definitely appreciate you guys for coming watching my video and subscribing it really means a lot so with that being said that's it for my one year reveal of my portfolio hopefully we'll be able to grow this even further and this will lead us to retirement or be to retirement at least and you guys as well so with that being said guys peace out and guys remember everybody eats